Okay, people. Okay, YouTube. I'm angry. I am angry. What am I angry about? This is what I'm angry about. I am angry that there are no common sense gun laws in this country. I am so angry about that. I am so angry at the, the, the amount of negative feedback I'm gonna get in the comment section about this. I'm angry at those people. I am angry at the NRA. I am angry at the gun lobbies that are paying senators and house representatives money to get rid of these bills that keep getting introduced about gun laws. I am so angry. And I don't know what it's going to take. The only thing that I can think about that will convince people is when they have a relative who is murdered in one of these shootings. This is going to keep happening over and over and over and over and over again. And I'm gonna tell you why I have more of an anger about this than maybe the common American who also believes the thing that I believe, things that I believe. When I was a kid, I had incidents with a couple of friends that were horrible, awful. I wouldn't wish these things that happened to me onto my worst enemy. However, that being said, what I've come to realize is that I don't know if it was these friends and what they did, or I don't know if it was just me and that somebody else in my situation might not have reacted in the same way that I did. I don't know. But what I felt at a very young age was I had two directions my mind could go down to deal with these feelings. Direction A is the direction I went down, which has resulted in severe depression and anxiety for most of my life. Option B was to go the opposite way. Option B would have turned me into the kid who would kill pets in the backyard. The kind of kid who would wet his bed. The kind of kid that has no respect for anything except for himself. The kind of kid who possibly, likely, would have turned into one of these shooters. Because of this, I have a deeper understanding, psychologically, of these people. These crazy lunatics are never going to stop. They're going to keep going, and they're going to keep going, and the spree murders that they, that they, that they go on will kill more people, and more people, and more people. There's going to be spree killings where people kill a hundred people someday. And I am so angry that the United States, the lawmakers, have not fixed this. And I am angry at all of you who have the opposite opinion. The future murders are on your hands because, and like I said, my deeper understanding, these people are as close to being out of control as you can possibly be without actually being out of control because nobody makes it obviously, makes them go off and buy guns and, no, of course not. They still have a little bit of free will, but it's that much, it is that much. you do not, if our country does not enact these laws, the murders will keep happening. And speaking about common sense, what is common sense is that the countries that have the common sense gun laws, like England, for example, where the police don't even carry guns, 
there are far less murders, far less murders and killings and spree shootings. This is not to say that other countries have not had this. There was a terrible spree shooter in one of the either Finland, um, uh, Sweden, or one of those countries. You can look it up. It was a horrific shooting. But it was one shooting. There was a shooting in New Zealand a few years ago, but it was one shooting. And it made the news because of how rare the shootings are there. It is completely insane and psychotic that we have not enacted these laws now, immediately. I'm gonna to go to the second amendment now. The second amendment to the constitution, if you look at it from a purely common sense angle, the main reason for it was that back then, the armies were not strong enough and the need for a well-organized militia therefore was stronger. People had to be a lot more every man for himself, which is not to say that's not how people should think now. They should, but the point is we have an army. We have the most powerful army in the world. People do not have to be the ones. Ordinary citizens do not have to be the ones that are almost like their own army because of how strong our military is now. Also, have you ever seen a weapon from the late 1700s? The most powerful weapon back then was a musket that could shoot maybe two bullets before you had to take another three minutes to clean the thing and reload it. If you had showed our founding fathers an automatic rifle, like an AK-47, their entire reality would have been blown. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you, the Second Amendment would have had serious revisions if this was the case. This is the first thing that I'm angry about. The second thing that I am angry, really angry about, and this is coming from somebody who had cancer, is the fact that we have health insurance, the whole medical system, how medicine has become and doctors, not doctors, excuse me, the whole medical industry is like a giant advertisement. It is sick. It is psychotic. If you are in England and Europe and you pass out from some disease, you barely pay anything. They help you and get you to feel better at the hospital because they have hearts. How healthcare in America is privatized. It's purely a business. Now, I got very lucky when I had cancer in that my cancer was so rare. And when I say rare, I mean only 400 people around have ever had it. That there was a study on it at the National Institute of Health in Bethesda, Maryland. And therefore, as part of the study, I got all of my chemotherapy for free. 
which would have been around $200,000. If I had not been part of this study, that money would have been on my hands. And that is sick. Most people, and maybe I am wrong about this, who feel this way, that privatized healthcare as a business is a good thing, again, have very likely never had a relative with a serious disease that cost them as much as a house in certain places of this country. How insulting is it that a cancer patient, while they are going through chemo, now has to find a way to pay $200,000. Congratulations, you got a disease and now you have to pay us forever if you do not have a job where you can pay that easily. There's gonna be certain people who get injured in a spree shooting, then go to the hospital, get their health care, and while they're recovering, get a big fat check. Excuse me, <laughs> that would be great. Get a big fat bill. Do you wanna see something sick? Look at this. This is an advertisement in my doctor's waiting room. And they're in every waiting room of every doctor's office in this country. The land of the free, the home of the brave, only if free means you have to pay $200,000 for health care. And only brave if the common people can buy a gun that in no way, shape, or form can be used, is usually used for hunting and sport. Unless the kind of hunting is of people. I very likely am going to take a trip to Europe or to India. And let me tell you something. In the past, when I've been fortunate enough to travel to these countries, as soon as I get off the plane, as soon as I get off the plane, I immediately feel more empathic, more compassionate, and more connected to people. My heart feels open again. Because these places have these things, which I have said in this video, we should have. So this is the end of this. I'm gonna get so much backlash in the comments section and I don't give a shit.